Molly, fresh out of jail, investigators say Ardala Jama got into a fight and kicked and stomped the man in the head after he fell to the ground. Now, this is the sixth arrest for Jama so far this year, and many of the cases involve violence. When Ardala Jama ended up at City Hall Park Saturday night, investigators say he'd just been let out of the county jail a few hours before. Witnesses told police Jama got into a fight with a 62-year-old man in this park and stomped his head, even as the man laid there unconscious. It's really concerning. You know, we work right by there. We see a lot of concerning behavior out of that park. And, and you know, when we get cases referred to us, we, we act on it. The county prosecutor expects to review the case for felony charges once police file a more complete investigation. The attack followed an assault on a security guard in Queen Anne just the day before. The guard says Jama took a swing at him, then headbutted him when the guard tried to restrain him. The city attorney's office received that case, and Jama was given a conditional release within hours of his arrest. We had the one from City Hall Park. The one from the previous day was a case that wasn't referred to us, and so that's why we didn't act on it. It just quite simply didn't come to us. The rest of the rap sheet for just this year includes assault, malicious mischief, harassment, and property destruction. Previously, he's been found incompetent to stand trial due to questions of mental illness and is generally set free within days when he is locked up. All right, the demonstrators wanted to make a point, a statement to the judge and to the governor, but that's all going to have to wait a while and all be put on hold for a week. The demonstrators chose the Lewis County Courthouse to make their views known that they support the restaurant owners in their decision to defy the governor's orders of no indoor dining. The governor says it's just too dangerous in spreading COVID-19. But the owners of Spiffy's Restaurant and their supporters say that hasn't happened. They face $100,000 in fines from the state for their defiance. But even the sheriff is siding with them. And so knowing Rod's story was huge in making the decision that I support Spiffy's. And I know that we have laws out there and we have all these things going on, but at the same time, what is right and what is wrong? We need to stand up for our constitutional rights. The judge was set to rule on that, but the court appearance was quickly postponed a week for the judge to rule on the defense request that he be taken off the case. It's the same judge who earlier, in the case against farm boy driving in Thurston County, ruled the owners were in contempt of court for violating his restraining order that they not have indoor dining. And I have found that there is and as a result of that, the law dictates that I find that there is contempt and I do what is necessary to try to bring compliance with the court's order. Judge Chris Lenny said this matter too will be heard on Tuesday and is not taking any action against the restaurant at this time, hoping they'll comply. They say you're basically breaking the law by allowing indoor dining. What's your response to that? Well, then they should shut down all the major corporations. Shut down Walmart, Target, Safeway, Fred Meyer, shut down all of them. State Labor and Industry says there have been 40 to 50 businesses that have had complaints about them through the Emergency Operations Center. About 20 of those are for safe start violations, and 20 to 30 are mask-related violations. 22 have received fines. Happening now, two major concerns in the fight against COVID-19. Amid worries about a possible spike in cases with the upcoming sunny holiday, comes a new concern about the rush to roll out a vaccine. First, let's get straight to the latest numbers from the Washington Department of Health. So far, at least 1,935 people have died from COVID-19, which is up just four from yesterday. There are nearly 6,800 people who have been hospitalized, eight more in the last 24 hours. And there have been more than 75,300 cases statewide, an increase of 438 from yesterday's report. Como's Keith Eldridge spoke with the state health secretary about all of this and joins us live tonight. Keith? Yeah, two things going on here. we got the Labor Day weekend coming up. Concerns there, but a more urgent concern right now is everybody wants a COVID vaccine, but the state health uh, director says he's worried that politics is really taking over what should be a scientific call. Now, right now, we know there is a worldwide push to find an effective vaccine to fight COVID-19 because right now there is little hope of fully wiping it out. But now the CDC, Centers for Disease Control, which is under the Trump administration, is mandating that all states prepare to distribute a vaccine on November 1st, and it issued guidelines on how to do that just days before the election, such as who should be first in line. The challenge with that, there is no such vaccine yet. They're all going through a series of trials, which the state health secretary says are vital to let them play out no matter what the calendar says. Going back to the November 1st deadline with the CDC, 
Isn't timing it with the national election rushing things a bit? Isn't that a dangerous precedent to set that perhaps science doesn't necessarily live by the calendar? What's your concerns there? That's why we are saying very clearly as a Department um, of Health that we believe the phase three clinical trials need to be completed before a vaccine is distributed. Our concern is that politics might get wrapped up into this. Uh, we have seen this happen with this administration before, um, and uh, that's why we're speaking out about it today. Well, Pfizer and Moderna vaccines use special technology, something called mRNA or messenger RNA. Now, experts say that future vaccines use some different technology, but they're just as exciting. Dr. Deborah Fuller and other experts agree the future looks bright when it comes to COVID-19 vaccines. Fuller is a vaccinologist at the UW School of Medicine, working on and developing vaccines. First, it was Pfizer, then Moderna that got the green light in the U.S. They count on mRNA technology. So the next set of vaccines that come out are going to be the ones that are based on a, a virus called adenovirus. On the horizon, there's AstraZeneca, which is set to get approval in the U.K. later this week. AstraZeneca is a viral vaccine. Dr. Rodney Ho, a professor of pharmaceutics and bioengineering at UW, explains the challenges of AstraZeneca. So the claim of fame of that viral vaccine is that it might give you a bit more cell immunity, cellular immunity, in addition to neutralizing antibody response. But the challenge, the trade-off is, is, is harder to manufacture. The latest buzz surrounds a potential vaccine that's a bit easier to manufacture. I think there's a, another exciting type of vaccine coming forward is the one from a company called Novavax. This is a recombinant protein vaccine. This is a type of vaccine we're very familiar with. Our current hepatitis B vaccine is a recombinant protein vaccine. UW Medicine now looking for hundreds of volunteers to take part in a phase three trial for Novavax. When it comes to the future of vaccines, Dr. Fuller is working hard on a second generation vaccine in her lab. Some of the future vaccines that we're looking at is potentially even a coronavirus vaccine that could protect against an unknown future pandemic that will induce immunity in the population so that we never have to see this sort of pandemic ever again. Hi everyone, I'm Preston Phillips from Como News. Thanks for checking out the Como YouTube channel. You can see more of our videos right here by clicking on the video links for more news from the Seattle area and Western Washington. Oh, and don't forget to click the subscribe button below so you don't miss our YouTube updates.